I, I foresee costs coming down tremendously in five years. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we see costs come down over 50% in five years on supply chain because of the efficiencies that are created. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Gray Jebesi, and this is another episode of the Gray Av Podcast. And this is episode number 96, featuring the Hercules team. And what's more interesting is that I am part of the Hercules team. So this is going to be interesting, really. Uh, I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Uh, so another interesting thing is that uh, we're almost at the end of 2018, and I'm about to publish my podcast number 100. Uh, that's that's something, uh, if you think about it, that, you know, it feels like yesterday when we entered 2018 doing the uh, the New Year's resolution podcast episode, and now we're already almost at the end. And, you know, uh, it's important to do a review of the entire year, which I will. Uh, I think the year has been great to me so far, uh, so I wouldn't complain. But yeah, I'm looking forward to episode 100, and I have already recorded it. But I'm not going to announce who the guest is going to be. Another interesting thing is that we are now on Spotify. So the Grey Air Podcast is now on Spotify, which is definitely exciting. And for Android users out there who couldn't get it on mobile because we were only on Apple Podcasts, now you can get it. Go there on Spotify and subscribe to the Grey Air Podcast. So you can actually listen to this episode on Spotify. Uh, so, coming back to today's episode, we have the Hercules team, like I said, myself included, but the focus here will be on the CEO of Hercules, Anthem Blanchard, and Logan Golima, the CTO. So, just to give you a little background um, of who these guys are, uh, Anthem is the co-founder and CEO of Hercules. He also co-founded Precious Metal Fintech Company, Anthem Vault Inc., and also served as their CEO. He has hands-on fintech experience and comes from Precious Metals background. Anthem is the son of the legendary gold bag and Precious Metal pioneer, James U. Blanchard III, who helped restore Americans' rights to own gold and also founded Rare Coin and Bullion Company. So that's Anthem, the CEO, and the CTO, Logan, is a blockchain developer and educator and also fintech innovator. Um, he's highly skilled in object-based coding and distributed networking, both in enterprise and private applications. With a lifetime of coding experience, Logan finds his place in blockchain due, due to his incredibly early adoption of the technology. So these are incredible guys that I work with, I've been working with for over a year now, and we're working on a project called Hercules. You can check it out on Herc.1, that's H. E R C dot O N E. You can check it out. It's a supply chain management software um, that's blockchain based. So you're gonna get to hear about this project and also just some wisdom uh, in general about uh, blockchain and supply chain in general. So without wasting too much of my voice in this hot weather in Cape Town, as we just entered our summer, I'll let you enjoy my podcast with Anthem and Logan. Enjoy. And if you go, if you manage to go to the website Herc.1 and have a look, uh, I'll be, I, w I would appreciate it if you email me from my website, greatjabesi.com and just let me know what you think. And obviously, if you want to get involved and participate, uh, feel free to uh, do that all on Herc.1. We're launching on the 29th of October. So I just thought this would be interesting to share with you guys because this has been a huge part of my year as well. So I'm really proud of this project. Uh, up until the end of this podcast, enjoy my conversation with Logan and Anthem. All right, cool. Well, thank you very much, Gray, for having us on. Uh, my name is Anthem Blanchard. I am the uh, CEO and co-founder of Hercules. And Hercules is blockchain software or blockchain platform and we make it easy for people to use blockchain software in their businesses. So um, we enable people to prove the information that they have, any information, text, pictures, any kind of data, and they can prove to anyone else that the data actually 
uh, represents what it actually is. So that's what we do with Hercules and we're excited to be launching in about a week. Awesome. And Logan, um, you want to introduce yourself. Obviously, you're the CTO of Hercules, but just give a more overview, introduction to yourself. Hi, yeah, I'm Logan Galima. I'm the CTO of Hercules. And, uh, you know, I lead this global distributed uh, development team uh, in making the best products on the planet. So we've been, you know, bringing on new uh, challenges every day. And uh, we power through by, you know, bringing superheroes onto our team. Right. So I would like to know from Anthem, what was the inspiration for Hercules? Because I, I'm aware that this is not your first project on the kind of blockchain related projects. But what, what was the, uh, looking at your background in the gold uh, market, but like, what was the inspiration for Hercules when you thought of actually Good question it. yeah so i've been in uh commercially personally in digital assets since 2002 um so i've uh, just been involved with digital currencies e-currency since 2002 a company called gold money that was a startup that's now publicly traded and uh, really through our companies now anthem vault anthem gold gold token company um and now hercules it's been seven and a half years uh, my wife and i um, with those companies and, and working with digital assets. And we have a really good understanding of the problems with proving an asset that is backing something digital is actually in existence and can actually be proven historically that it was in existence and it was the form that we say or anyone says um, is. And, and so dealing with this intrinsic problem of proof of custody of historical information led us down this path of figuring out ultimately what we realize is a much greater solution and being able to figure out the digital audit trail and have indisputable information that someone can provide to anybody else about a digital audit trail, whether it's physical or digital. So that was uh, the path to Hercules. Right. So you weren't surprised when Bitcoin came in then if you actually started working with digital assets uh, way back in 2002. Yeah. Well, I mean... I learned about Bitcoin pretty early, so um, around 2010 or so, and personally got involved, you know, purchasing Bitcoin in 2012, at the end of 2012. So, um, you know, really was kind of waiting to see when I thought that there was enough security in terms of the maturity of the software, being able to secure other applications that actually had value tied to them, like gold. So um, our team started to develop in blockchain software around middle of 2013. So it's been a it's it's been quite a long time now. It's been almost five and a half years. And um, I, I think just like anything, you just do something long enough, you get knowledge. And, um, you know, so that was our path to Hercules. All right. So for a lot of people, um, for the average person out there who probably does not know enough about blockchain, but they do know supply chain, uh, the question that comes a lot is like, why do you need blockchain for supply chain at all? Logan, maybe you can take a stab on that. Yeah, our approach has really been um, you know, e ease of use and user experience. So you know, in supply chains today, there's a lot of uh, collusion and racketeering and a lot of issues that come with uh, paperwork and uh, digitizing assets and you know, ensuring that they go along in one application or, you know, pulled in through an API, uh, it's really been our challenge to make uh, it very simple for enterprises to come on and leverage Hercules to their advantage as an internal control. Uh, and, and hopefully um, the world will see soon that we mean business. And what we have is uh, a really a global standpoint for supply chain. All right. So when you actually started the project, I wonder if what you actually thought, I think the, the question is where the technology was and where it is now in terms of the blockchain space is a little different because it's changing so fast. Uh, everybody's trying to update and make the software a little better. So I wonder what, what has been the shift since you started building and to what it is now in terms of the other protocols that you're also utilizing to make it more robust of a service? Yeah, I guess, um, you know, with all of the different engineers uh, globally that 
continuously work and operate to make these uh, systems more secure, more stable, uh, more environmentally friendly. We've seen a mass influx of projects and even enterprises that want to integrate blockchain come into this space um, and bring their own um, their own innovations to it. So there's so many that you can't really, you know, we could be here all day and dig into, uh, you know, what's come about in the last year that we've started this company. Um, but hopefully, uh, you know, people will see that Hercules is bringing a lot of standards uh, up to the realm of um, contention. So we're, we're really happy to be building with the best advanced standards for tokens, uh, the best platforms out there, you know, working uh, solidly with the devs that are, you know, continuously uh, providing those uh, platforms. And we're going to be providing our own systems uh, upon launch as well. All right. So for a lot of people, well, one of the questions that comes up is, is that, okay, we're hearing a lot about uh, digital assets or digitizing of assets. Anthem, do you want to explain what this whole concept of digitizing assets really means to like an average person who is not really that technical? Yeah. So when we talk about Bitcoin, what Bitcoin really invented was a concept of a unique digital asset. So really a digital asset really just means digital information. And so, you know, that, that you can quantify. So, I mean, anything you can think of as simple as, you know, a few letters or numbers in an Excel spreadsheet, right? That, that technically, you know, is, you know, it, it's its own digital asset of sorts. Now it's wrapped in an, another digital asset that's, you know, an Excel spreadsheet or, you know, a, a comma separated value file or, or something, but these are all digital assets. Anything digital you can quantify that like is a, is a thing, is a digital asset. So as we know, right, we shop on Amazon, right, or sites like it. And, you know, Carrefour, you know, now is a lot more electronic and Walmart, right? These former brick and mortars, everything is pretty much digitized and their back office is all digitized. So we really live in a digital asset world and we have for decades now. Really nine and a half years ago, what Bitcoin brought to the digital world was the concept of a unique digital asset. So before Bitcoin, you can think about a file. You can copy a file and send a file off your computer infinite times, right? A document, some music, whatever. But with a with a Satoshis, which are the software keys and the Bitcoin software, so they're all unique. So the digital assets, the product keys that power this Bitcoin software are all unique. And so it brought us this concept of unique digital assets. And so Hercules plays in this world of unique digital assets because for something to be unique, you have to be able to trust it, right? Trust its characteristics that are given to you. It has to be trusted. So when you have trusted anything, you can then trust the trust to build on top of that trust more, something even grander, something richer, in context, richer in texture, right, and in, 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 in layers. And that's what we've done with Hercules is take all of these different blockchains like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Factum, and IPFS, and storage, and, and, and more, and interlace them together in a way that they make something even more, right? It's like, think about candy, right, is really just processed sugar, right, with processed cocoa beans and you know, different elements and milk, right? So, but together they make something altogether different and incredible, right? So same thing with Hercules. It takes all of these incredible ingredients and makes something even more delicious and incredible out of them. Right, so that's well understood. But now if you had to explain what Hercules does to a supply chain manager and then to the token holder, it's like where does Hercules comes in and where does the token uh, plugs in to the, uh, to the end user? And then Logan, you can then explain technically how this whole thing is set up to someone who is technical. How could you break it down to another engineer? So basically from, from the supply chain manager standpoint, like a plant manager or digital rights manager, let's say they can use Hercules to then input any data that they're currently saving and then they're just going to input it one more place, right? Their data is already being inputted multiple times. If they're a major business to multiple databases, we're just another database 
to add on to their multiple databases, then it's incredibly inexpensive because there isn't some big service contract that pay as you use it. And ultimately, Hercules enables that plant manager, that CEO or COO or whomever in the organization to do is to prove to any other third party, a potential business partner, a regulator, a tax authority, anyone that questions the information to prove indisputably that the historical information they're showing them, it could be you know, as simple as the date and the time and just some basic text. It could be as complicated as having the geographic location with the person, with the types of materials, all the way proven, right? So Hercules is agnostic when it comes to the data that it receives. And, and that's one of the beautiful things about it. It's Hercules is very flexible in terms of being able to provide this data integrity across many, many multiple, virtually any supply chain or global value chain. Right. Yeah, and, you know, technically the benefits and the main advantage of our uh, HERC tokens is that they, you know, they use new methods of recognizing the contract interface. Uh, over the years, we've had different standards come about, uh, the ERC-20, the ERC-223, you know, with non-fungible crypto kitties, we have the 721, but the HERC is going to be an HERC-777. Um, so this standardizes a lot of different things, brings up um, the new advanced token standard that has been going around in the Ethereum space. Uh, we're going to have DevCon uh, this week in Prague. Uh, a lot of the Ethereum wizards are going to be, you know, managing new um, new realms of uh, technological space uh, coming out of the next couple months. So we'll, we're working side by side with a lot of these people. And, uh, you know, when we look at, as Anthem stated, we're leveraging IPFS, Factum, Storage, Ethereum. We're building um, different constructs on EOS, all these different platforms that you hear about that sound so far uh, out of the realm of, of ease and usability, Hercules makes it so that you can uh, leverage these different protocols and uh, all in one place. All right. And for I mean, uh, this project has taken a very long time to actually come to, to launch. It is you know, over a year now. Uh, which is incredible as compared to a lot of projects in the space which actually just come out and immediately they're rolling out, uh, which means you have taken uh, a lot, you know, you have put in enough attention to things like the legal side of it, make sure the tech actually works, and all the small important details that actually are important for a project to take off. Uh, could you just explain the processes that you had to go through to actually make it more? Uh, more safe and secure, and make sure that every you know the investors are safe and everybody's happy. Yeah. So when we look at the systems and um, you know the dev time and and everything in the back end, which Anthem can really attune to, uh, you know we've gone about its pen testing. We're going through a pen test right now that's been uh, that was brought on by Andrew Yashkuk, our advisor and VP of product of Factum. Uh, we're with Coin Mercenary right now on our final Solidity smart contracts for the tokens, as well as uh, our platform. They've helped out Polymath as well as a lot of other different projects. Um, you know, in, in terms of legal and regulations, it's been a myriad of projects that have failed because they haven't taken their time um, to really iron out the details. And Anthem, if you want to conclude. Yeah, no, thank you. That was great, Logan. Basically, we took an approach of designing the product, testing the product, redesigning the product, retesting the product, iterating for now it's been a little over eight months, uh, almost. It's, it's been pretty close. Yeah, so it was the beginning of March, and we've taken that much time. That was the very first version of our build. We started to conceptually design Back in March of 2017, you know, that came kind of to more fruition, you know, kind of later in the year. And, you know, with Logan and team built a uh, first uh, version in the beginning of March, and we've tested. So I think what makes us a little different than, let's say, 990 plus out of 1,000 uh, projects that we've seen in the space the last 18 months is that we had a real problem that we've dealt with for over a decade in warehousing gold. And... Yeah, you know, I'm used to dealing with this problem, and it was obvious to us it was a real business problem. And so we really needed to figure out a way to be able to 
differentiate a gold digital asset ultimately and how do you prove the gold's audit trail and provenance and so that was really what i think differentiated us because we had a problem that we dealt with for years i mean you know i've dealt with since 2002 commercially right so to have bitcoin there i mean we knew we needed to tie into it but we didn't you know we needed to figure out how and then there's just been a lot of insight the last 18 months. And so because we've been focused on fixing a problem instead of being focused on how can we sell as many product keys as possible, I think it's led us naturally to a much bigger state kind of paradoxically where now, I mean, we're just getting ex so much excitement now being a week away or roughly. And I mean, just the order of magnitude of the, the people that are embracing us now in terms of organizations and people, individuals, I mean, it's it's exciting and we're uh, we're excited for midnight, October 29th to roll around. So, so Logan, what are the the features that you're excited about for people to actually uh, see, uh, see or hear or actually work with about the platform? Uh, and to you, Anthem, who are your advisors? What is your team made of? And, you know, uh, how did all these people come to get involved with this project? Yeah, so uh, when we look at features, we really look at our core smart contracts. So, you know, we have uh, asset registration, asset tracking, asset validation, all these different things that uh, a user can come in with Herc tokens and, you know, start building their supply chain. Uh, you know, being able to hold your Hercs in the D app as well as really any other zero X address um, that the user sees uh, secure. Um, you know, this is a, an ERC 777, but it's backwards compatible. So anybody with a uh, Ethereum address that holds tokens can also hold this address. And uh, we'll be looking forward to, uh, you know, exchanges picking us up when we build a lot more momentum. And Anthem, the question was, how, how, how is your advisory team? And yeah, well, well, first of all, so our, our, we have got our key management, which, you know, Logan, obviously you and Gray, you are a big part of, and yeah. Cynthia, our president, my wife, and so Gray is our chief visual officer for disclosure. So uh, we've got a, a really great team, uh, Josh Gunter, Michael Nelson, strategy, uh, Justin Bream, creative officer, um, Heath, uh, content director, um, you know, we've got great advisors. We've got a much bigger team than that. I mean, we have a lot of on our account, um, just, just a lot of really great people overall. I, um, we're just, you know, grateful for all the devs that we've got on the team. Everyone that, that Logan leaves, there's about like a dozen some odd there. And, you know, we're really grateful. Uh, yeah, Juliana and Stack and uh, Dax um, and Sean and, and um, just, you know, Ubi and, and it's just, it's just a really, really great team. Um, you know, I'm sure I know I'm missing a few people actually, and, but just to kind of keep it a little bit brief, uh, we'll go through where we've got a great advisory board. Um, some of the names there that are pretty recognizable, Andrew Yashkut that you mentioned, um, he's at Factum, head of product and also he's a head of hardware integration at Storage, which is another blockchain solution that he utilizes, Bill Barhide. Uh, CEO, founder of Abra Wallet, which is one of the, the top two or three most popular Bitcoin wallets uh, in the app stores right now, Apple and Android. Um, we've got uh, Steve Dack, who's a co-founder of Ethereum blockchain, which is a blockchain that we utilize um, in the Hercules uh, decentralized stack. And uh, just there, there's so many, um, you know, Dominic Zenas, uh, who was with Mastercoin, the first uh, token offering that wasn't a Bitcoin fork back in uh, 2013. Um, you know, just, it's just, it just, the list goes on and on. Michael Turpin, Joby Weeks, um, Wendy Kraft. It, it's just an exhaustive list. We're really grateful, um, you know, how many people have gotten involved um, in our advisors to us. So, you know, we just, we're just grateful, you know, um, we're, we're grateful for Bitcoin and Ethereum and, um, all of the blockchains that have come before us and allow us to help bring this idea of indisputable data integrity historically to the world. Awesome. And let's uh, let's imagine it's the midnight of, of the 29th of October, 2018. To the average uh, person who is watching this right now and he wants to get involved, probably hold, uh, get some Herc tokens, what's going to be the process? 
So you're going to want to go to uh, Herc.1 and, you know, do your own research on our project. If it's something that you feel like you want to participate in, there's going to be some links to follow and there's going to be a lot of different tutorials on, you know, how to be involved as a, uh, as a participant. And we really hope to see uh, your wallet get added to the uh, worldwide ledger of Herc holders. Awesome. And one thing that you, I think you should mention, uh, Logan, is about the, uh, the, in, in, the incentives with Hyper. Uh, I think that's a very exciting feature as well to just mention about. Yeah, you know, as you brought it up, um, with everything else that's going on, we have a uh, you know, gamified, incentivized uh, validation system that's built on uh, human tasks uh, in, uh, initiating smart contracts. So we're trying to build uh, this new consensus model that, um, you know, is is our theory of how we can, you know, go green with uh, a proof of human work, which, uh, you know, Hyper, as you mentioned, is uh, human initiated performance reporting. Performance reports, as any supply chain manager would uh, uh, know, is where all the metrics lay in a supply chain. So. Um, there's more information on our site, in our white paper, and in our yellow paper on just how this works. And uh, we'll be seeing that rolled out uh, with the Hercules platform. Right. And Anthem, lastly, what, what do you think um, is going to happen in, in supply chain uh, as an industry in the next, say, five years? Or in which other industries do you think blockchain is going to disrupt quite quickly, quite faster than people would think or expect? Yeah, I, well, that, that, that's a great question. I, I foresee costs coming down tremendously in five years. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we see costs come down over 50% in five years on supply chain because of the efficiencies that are created. Because at the end of the day, the biggest problem in business is lack of data integrity, literally the ability to trust what somebody else is telling you. And having no way to prove, and that person that wants to prove has no way to prove right now. So Hercules brings the provability that Bitcoin invented. It makes it commercially usable by removing, in Bitcoin's case, over 10,000 times price volatility to use the Bitcoin service. It's literally varied over $100 to under a penny to use Bitcoin software to make a transaction in this Bitcoin ledger software. But that's just over the last 12 months alone. So um, Ethereum is over 200 times. So the last three months alone of price service fee volatility by Hercules layering and by substituting out different layers as other layers become more cost effective, you know, we're going to be bringing the efficiencies to all of commerce that blockchain has to provide of this data integrity, public blockchain. So, um, but we play well with private too. And Really, we just want to, we play well with everyone. We play well with existing software that people have, you know, their existing database software, their existing accounting software. We work well with public chains. We work with private chains. We work well with DAGs. We work, um, you know, like a hash graph. So um, really, Hercules is super flexible, super lean. We're only focusing on really what we do, which is the commercial layer, right? We're really a clearing agent, a substitution agent, and an indexing agent. So... You know, we really try to leave everything else to other people for the most part. Awesome. Uh, Logan, do you have anything you want to share before we, we close? Yeah, I just want to thank you, Gray, uh, you know, for having us on here and also, you know, for being um, really the first superhero that came on to the team after, uh, you know, I started seeking him out. So, you know, it's been really cool working with you for the past, uh, you know, year, over a little bit of a year now. And, you know, just really excited to see, uh, you know, what else comes out of this project, especially with uh, you at the helm of visuals. Awesome. Uh, thank you guys so much as well. Uh, you, it's unbelievable almost to think that it has been over a year now. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it has been great working with you as well. It's, it's really awesome. Uh, Anthem, anything you want to share? Before we close. No, just thank you. Thank you as well. And, you know, again, we're grateful for anyone that wants to check us out. Herc.1. Actually, kind of a neat thing. Crowdfunder.com will also have Herc uh, live. And it's their first ever utility token, software token is, is, is Herc. And so that's Crowdfunder.com. That'll be November 5th, uh, a week after we launch on Herc.1. So 
We're excited about that. There'll be a lot of other uh, very exciting announcements once Hercules is a live product in a week. Uh, so we're very excited about all that. So thank you again for helping to educate people and to give us exposure and yeah, for everything you've done and you do with our team and Hercules. Appreciate it. And Anthem Gold. Awesome. Cheers, guys. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank Thanks, Greg. Hello once again, and that was the end of our conversation. And just before you go, just want to communicate a few things with you uh, quickly. If you have uh, enjoyed any of the podcast or this specific podcast episode, I would appreciate it if you share it with your friends and family through your social media, Twitter, Facebook, etc., etc., as well as write me a five star review on iTunes or Apple Podcast app. That would be fantastic. It helps me flourish and sustain this podcast as well. Uh, we also on other platforms like SoundCloud, uh, Stitcher Radio, um, and all other major podcast platforms. So whichever way you're listening to it, I would appreciate it if you leave me a review. You can also subscribe to the Grey Podcast through my website, greyjabesi.com, G-R-E-Y-J-A-B-E-S-I.com. There you also find some of the blogs that I'm writing sometimes and you get notified as soon as the new episode has been published until next time enjoy and be productive thank you